Hey, this is Timur Sol, and this is the second episode of the Goblin Market uh, episode, so part two. Um, in the previous episode, we were laying out the lore about the Goblin Market, how to find it, what it is, how to get inside, how to um, get past the wards, um, how to understand the Goblin tokens when you enter a Goblin Market, and so on. We also touched briefly on the topic what you can find in the market itself but in this episode we will be fleshing out the deals and mechanics of the goblin market a little bit further i will try to give you example vendors example goods that you can buy example things that you can offer as a player when you want to buy something on the market and so on um, this episode will not be a narrative episode so we will not be talking about colors smells and so on I will not be um, creating a description of a goblin market in this episode as I understand that each market should be somewhat different. My market will be fitting into my world and my world alone as only I know what creatures are odd in my world and only you know what creatures and what things could be more fitting into your goblin market so we're not going to do that we are however going to focus on some mechanics and some ideas of what you can use in your game to make the goblin market a special and incredible place as it deserves to be one as previously the thing that i'm showing you on the screen i will try to um somehow make it accessible to you all when um when i made this uh when i proofread it and when i edit it so that it's uh, accessible in a more um appropriate way um when i do so i will update the description you will find it in the description so if you don't see uh, a specific link to uh, these mechanics in the description uh, just pop in in two weeks or less and uh, it should be fine so what we have here is uh, the simple mechanics for goblin market um i would like to start with saying this since the objects and things emotions and so on on the goblin market are considered or should be considered uh, strange awkward or specific or peculiar or whatever other word you want to use it is vital and crucial to understand that the gold value is not gonna help us here um most vendors at the goblin market won't be interested in your pretty penny they won't have a need for gold for platinum or for cooper or whatever else if um if a vendor asks you for 13 cooper pieces for something um he might want you for example to lay out each and every cooper piece that you have on his table and he will pick the 13 cooper pieces from uh from the ones that you have because he might find value in some of them and in some of them not this is the amount of weirdness with which which uh, we are dealing so what i suggest is um, instead of uh, monetary values great everything that you have uh, both on the seller side and on the player side from one to five uh, i will give you examples of what is one and one what is five for me uh, in a minute or two uh, one would be things that are relatively unimportant simple irrelevant whatever else you want to call it um, five would be things that are very very important uh, if you are the dm you take the real cost for example you have a magic sword that uh, cures lycanthropy um you value it as a four dots in the five dot scale scale you value it as a four dots um you don't ask for another thing that is um that is four dots worth you ask for something that is five dots worth and obviously the buyer doesn't want to pay four dots so of something he or she wants to pay three dots so wants to get the item cheaper you can start with these this point system and haggle through this or if like me you are poor in haggling you can use a mechanic that i suggest over here so um you can haggle normally or uh you can use a mechanic for that take the npc stat roll a d20 add your persuasion 
and your proficiency to the out outcome. Uh, this might be something different in your game. If you're not playing Dungeons and Dragons, it might be not persuasion, but um, I don't know, intimidation or something else that you got in your game. Maybe street wisdom or something else. Uh, maybe there won't be a proficiency, but the idea is that both sides roll a d20 and add the same things to that roll of a d20. Um, so the NPC, so the seller does roll, the PC does roll. There's no magic allowed in these rolls. There are natural skills allowed. So if you have a bard with expertise, that's fine. Your DM or you as a DM should be aware of that and should react appropriately. Um, but basically there's no magic allowed, only natural uh, natural thing. Cleverness should be awarded always. It, it's not only on the goblin market cleverness from players should always be awarded it's something that uh makes the game so much fun um and one more thing make sure that your players if you are the dm make sure that the players know the mechanic um they should be aware of how it works before they start rolling each side rolls three or five or seven or nine times it depends on how much your players right like to roll how much emotion you get from this rolling each outcome should be narratively explained so after each roll you will roll a 20 uh, you roll a 19 as the seller and somebody and the player uh, rolls a four for example um so you narratively explain how the uh, seller tries to um uh, tries to deceive the players that he already has a different buyer for the, for the item so he won't go down with the price and things like that it's relatively simple once you know what the outcome is um so each role should be narratively described after the role is made uh if you're wondering what i mean by uh divide into levels from one to five well exactly this over here you have a example division of um of importance and unimportance this is the seller cost so the vendor and over here we have our pcs that want to buy something um cost one so irre irrelevant uh, or simple uh, for the seller it might be something that doesn't mean much so, so like a comb that changes your uh, hair color a pocket watch an image of a god may have made by a blind child so things that are somewhat awkward or strange but in the magic world they roughly should be uh, understandable let's say uh, on the buyer side it might be a boring memory an insignificant dream that doesn't actually mean something mm, level two so interesting but not complex uh, would be a troll's toe a vampire's nail uh, an ever glowing stone an intelligent pet rat and it could be on the buyer side a badly kept sec secret or one of your kisses not the most important kiss not the kiss of your loved one one of the kisses important that could be a rare scroll it could be a proficiency uh token so a token that gives you proficiency as long as you as you wear it it could be a minor boon or charm from the dungeons master's guide um, and you could buy that for example for the name of your loved one and if you go back to the fey bargains episode if you give away a name you forget the person uh you could be part of your true name so if you give your part of your true name you don't have to know the true name um the the fame market the go goblin market will extract it from you if you oblige if you allow yourself to get rid of part of your name well someone has an easier job to get a hold of you um a memory of home a proficiency so if you give those away you forget them you don't have access to them so if you forget your home you don't know where your home is that doesn't mean that you forget your parents but you don't know where home is and even if someone tells you in the future where home is you will forget it instantly you get rid of the possibility of remembering something that you get uh, that you paid with on the goblin market uh, a very important thing would be a strong magic item so very rare uh, maybe even an artifact or although it it varies a werewolf paw uh, a magical map that leads you to a magical secret Mm, it could be a uh, memory long lost by someone or something that so could be a memory of, uh, of an archmage uh, that has been slain some time ago and the memory contains a cipher uh, to his keep just an example a fortune so a destiny of a fortune for example this would be for your true name for two proficiencies your ability to dream or your shadow and again i uh I encourage you to visit the Fey Bargains episode to uh, 
if you want to delve deeper in these. An extreme that would be, for example, an artifact, a summoning scroll uh, for a dragon or a Tarask or whatever else, a depth of an archfey, uh, a key that opens every lock. So very, very, very powerful things. Um, and uh, for this, you would have to give away all your childhood memories. So whole, your whole backstory, your all languages, proficiencies, and other things connected with your childhood go away. Um, three proficiencies. All your exper experiences that include your loved ones. So you forget your whole family, uh, everyone and everything you loved. You forget the will, the reason why you are doing things, for example. So the price is very, very steep. Um, both the player and the NPC can check what's the estimated value and what's the, uh, what's the real value of something that is being... Uh, the object of haggling uh, and they do it by an investigation versus a deception role from each side uh, and again always award to pc ingenuity and creativeness uh, if they make the offer first uh, try to incorporate it it's hard for players to come up with something like this it, it, imagine someone going into a shop and suggesting that he will pay with a badly kept sec secret um, it's hard to figure these things out so award your players if they find that this is uh, something that uh, that they want to do. Um, one more thing. Um, in my conception of the, this uh, mechanic, it should be so that you can back off from the deal uh, until the last roll is made. So if we're rolling five times before the fifth roll, you can back out. Um, it, or before the third winning roll, if we roll five times, you can back out. If the dice is on the table, if it has been rolled, there is no possibility to back out of the deal. The deal is made once the dice is rolled. That's my rule for this one. Um, and it, again, it gives you an adrenaline rush or your players an adrenaline rush that is, uh, I think, much needed. I moved the document a little bit so you can see uh, the list a little bit better. Uh, so I divided uh, some things that can be bought and sold into separate uh, levels. Uh, you have five levels of, uh, of objects over here. And we will look at each level. These are made as tables, so you can roll on a table. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to pick things from uh, from the tables you can roll a die uh, a dice for it so on a, the first level we have um, things that you can buy for example a super sense so you cannot be surprised there is no surprise attack on you um, you get a secret you can buy a secret but you don't uh, know what secret it might be useful it might not be useful you might buy a specific secret uh, if you specify what you want um, you can buy a loyal CR1 uh, pet beast um, this is something you could buy probably also in the material world sometimes, so it's not very uh, extreme. You can buy a lucky token. So one check is an automatic success of your cho of your choice. And after this, uh, after this one check, the token breaks apart. Mm, a small physical alteration. So for, for example, um, your ears start to be pointy or stop to be pointy. Um, a piece of clothing. Uh, so um, you get a piece that is always clean or can transform into another piece of clothing. Again, a very common magical item. Or you can buy some luck. So you can buy inspiration for the next roll that you want or for uh, for any roll in, within the next 24 hours. Prices could be things like this. Your ability to cry, your ability to sweat, to grow hair, grow nails, your ability to run. Um, again, it could be a secret from you. It could be, and uh, I like this one in particular, it could be a secret that is entrusted uh, to you is told to you but you cannot use it and the secret could be for example connected with another party member but you cannot use this secret if you try you get the whole wrath of the goblin market on your uh, on your shoulders uh, so the secret might be um the brother of uh, your party member wants to kill you and you cannot do anything about it until something happens until somebody else does something about it you know it, but you cannot react. Um, you can pay with your loyal pet. You can pay uh, with the next prize whenever you win anything. So this is a Witcher-esque kind of vibe over here. You can pay with your eyes color. Uh, so your eyes go gray or white or bland. And uh, in some cases it might cause disadvantage in some charisma checks. 
um, you can pay with 33 shoelaces or buttons from different people. Uh, so bringing the awkwardness and strangeness to the Feywild. Uh, you can pay also with some of your luck. So the next natural uh, 20 becomes a natural 10. Um, now, the players don't specifically need to hear about this, how every single one of these uh, options work um, up front. They might, if you're a DM that gives all the info away straight up, that's fine. But you might want to just keep it like this. Some of your luck without this part of, uh, of the information, without talking that how it works in mechanically. Let the player uh, decide if he wants to take the risk. Again, this is a game of consequences, so, so why not? Um, I think I'm not going to go through the whole list, so let's just leave level 2. Uh, we'll leave level 3. Let's look at level 4, for, for example. What can be bought that would be on the scale of 1 to 5, a level 4? Um, a favor. A medium favor, a small favor, a large favor. And it also can be a currency. You can pay in favors. You can pay with your ability to read. Not talk, not speak not understand, but ability to read. All text just goes away in some way. Your understanding of the number seven. Each time the number seven occurs, it just baffles you. It escapes your understanding. It's impossible. Number seven is impossible. Two plus five, just it's, it's an equation that is impossible to solve. Uh, it could be number three. It could be number two. It could be any number below number 10. It, it gives you many, many narrative opportunities um, to goof around with your players um, your shadow a name not necessarily your name but a name tears of a king could be the currency a collection of smut books um, which you need to collect from different parts of the empire uh, a currency might be the allowance or the acceptance of uh, the seller putting tattoo on you and you have the magical tattoo and Tasha's cauldron of everything but um, the tattoo can be also a scrying mechanism for example it can work as something that is a constant spy on you a couple's love um, you can pay with a cursed item and what you can buy for it um, you can buy a reputation in a region you can buy someone's name you can buy someone's shadow you can buy advantage and in investigation checks this is a lot um, you can buy a magic tattoo, a potion of love that is permanent, permanent uh, magic item of your choosing. So you can see that for these prices, also the rewards could be very, very useful. And on the fifth level, I only have four. Um, so you can have, you can pay with an empty phylactery, you can pay with your soul and ability point, all your full moons. And I didn't write this down over here, but all your full moons would roughly mean uh, contracting lycanthropy. Um, and you can also get really cool stuff out of it. The Devil's devil's Iker. That's a cool thing, narratively. Um, and these, again, these are uh, examples. I will put them together in a document uh, that is usable um, and it will be accept uh, available for free somewhere. Um, so you can use it also in your games. But what I also wanted to do today, since we're not doing a uh, narrative how uh, Goblin Market should look, I wanted to give you five or six examples of vendors because I believe that vendors are much much more important than the goblin market itself with the vendor comes the idea of how the uh, stall or, or uh, office should look like uh, these are the basics for me so what I got here is the hammer uh, an albino uh, albino dwarf um, with only one eye and an eye patch on the other eye um, the second eye is underneath a red ruby but in fact is a functional hag's eye what i also like is i always give the npcs a couple of things if we're talking about npcs that are vendors so we have looks personality story and what he sells personality he's very quiet and reserved uh, although he has only one eye he's very observant he seldom talks with his customers and would rather not haggle a deal is a deal a price is a price as a child, he wandered off into a mine where he accidentally fell into a fey dark portal imprisoned by Fomorians um, for dozens of years. He managed to catch the eye of a hag doing business with the Fomorians. Sold as a slave, he bought his freedom with an unpayable uh, debt. Uh, 
being the hag's inside man at the fey market or the goblin market until she sees something she's been looking for since forever and again this is a plot hook that is ready to be exploited and he sells a semi-mechanical contraption contraption that uh, used the awkward magic of the fey so um hammers with pixie dust or uh steam engines that go on methods things like that um so he's somewhat an artificer Shelly. Shelly is a skeleton. She is eight foot tall. Uh, she had, has dead blue eyes deeply inside her skull uh, with an ever grinning uh, smile. Shelly likes to wear pretty floral dresses and straw hats, um, even if it rains. She is neutral and somewhat oblivious to her uncommon state. She's uh, roughly unaware that she's a skeleton. Um, if anyone tries to point that out, she uh, points out uh, or she uh, advises uh, the person that it's uh, cruel and unjust to judge a book by its cover. If pressed, pressed uh, or put in a tight spot, she might have a sudden burst of evil laughter supplemented by casting power word kill on the nearest living creature. So Shelley was possibly a leech that was twisted by the wild magic of the Feywild. And be it a curse or a blessing, she is now bound to the Fey until someone brings her another leech's memory that she can use as her own. And as such, Shelly has this distant recollection that she's missing something. And thus, she be uh, became a memory merchant, buying and selling what she can get and examining it with pure naivety. So, uh, Shelly is a good leech that is simply um, in the memory business. Bokobok -bok is uh, a tall, slender, blue-skinned giant with extremely long fingers and possibly more joints than a human dressed in a robe and a strange hat that covers their two dome skull uh, when they walk it seems as though they are floating above the ground and uh, Bokobok -bok is uh, arcane or a mercant um, this is from the fourth edition D&D an interdimensional um, an interdimensional merchant uh, type creature um, other representatives of the Arcan race uh, are deemed somewhat uncaring, cool, or distant. Bokobok -Bok seems to be um, everything opposite. He's chattering, he's flamboyant, um, and they seem to be obsessed with stories of what's happening on the material plane and other planes of existence. Um, he once traveled into the Feywild um, with other Arcanes during a strange, strange storm uh, in the ethereal plane. Um, and he's the only survivor. He picked, piqued the interest of an archfey that established that had a keep nearby, especially um, due to the strange nature of the newcomer that is seemingly unfazed by, by the fey magic. Now, fey magic is works on everybody, but the mercant uh, Bokobok -Bok, um, seemingly wasn't aware of that, that she should or they should react. Um, with time, uh, they came to an agreement. Uh, the first one, uh, so Bokobok -Bok became a noble on the court of the Archfey, and um, the, the Bokobok -Bok, uh, in, uh, in exchange became the royal craftsman or enchanter. And as such, he deals with enchantments. Uh, he possesses a unique skill to see enchantments as a physical object, so he can um, he can swap enchantments, he can raise them, uh, he can sell new enchantments. Uh, he can take enchantments from existing items and just put them in another place and even craft whole new enchantments uh, from scratch if he has a positive incentive. Next up I got uh, the Veil and the Unveiler. A curious pair. pair. The Unveiler looks like a handsome uh, human, mid 30s, uh, mid 40s, sorry, uh, silver goatee beard uh, and on his back he has an immensely heavy leather coat. On closer inspection it seems that this is a living and breathing cloaker, the monster. Um, next to him you can see a drider called Vale, uh, constantly spinning a uh, yarn uh, thread uh, on a wheel. Um, vale has the face of a beautiful grow woman and the body of a giant spider. So most of the body is covered with uh, with a blanket. Um, initially, the pair is some somewhat reluctant and untrusting, distant. Uh, if convinced that the party doesn't have any um, bad uh, intentions uh, and is only here for business, they open up and unveiler dosed most of the talking and veil is uh, just interrupting from time to time. They all in all, they seem like a, a happy marriage. Um, the unveiler was once an adventurer, ranger, sorcerer, 
um, that was wandering through the material plane in search of unique components for spells. And he was trapped by the Dwergar in the Dwergar colony for several years uh, without actually ever knowing why he was trapped and not killed. Um, the only other voice that he heard was the voice, voice of, um, of Vale. He never saw her for these years. Mm, he only heard her voice. And they grew on each other. The pair grew on each other. Uh, there was an uh, incursion or some other um, other battle, huge battle uh, in Dwergar. Uh, um, citadel which caused the walls to collapse and the prisoners were free uh, Vale dragged the semi-unconscious uh, unveiler to the surface and the pair decided that they will escape to the Feywild where nobody will uh, look at their relationship in one way or another um, they sell, sell faces uh, magical mirrors clothes uh, they can offer you a face of a stranger or someone you know they will be also very willing to buy your face. They will be willing to buy your body. Uh, additionally, Veil vale creates clothes that have some minor uh, magical qualities. So everything that she does on her yarn uh, is somewhat magical. The Shade is a humanoid, size of an ogre, uh, covered in heavy robes uh, and tightly bandaged. So he looks somewhat like a huge mummy. And um, their broad sh shoulders, I mean, there, because we don't know if it's a he or she, um, indicate physical strength. But um, it's hard to tell anything specific because the whole face is covered in bandages. You can only see one eye that is octagonal with eight irises on the eye in the center of the forehead. Um, when they speak, they do it only in telepathy, uh, pointing the eye towards the speaker. Uh, they are very slow speaking, slow talking, deliberate. Uh, they, their way of talking also suggests that they are extremely intelligent, not only powerful in physical uh, aspects, but also extremely uh, intelligent. Um, they speak in riddle, riddles, ask a lot of awkward, strange questions that seem out of time and place, and that is because of their story. The Shade is the last representative of a race wiped out in an event that happened eons ago, or far away in the future. It's hard to say um, because of the Feywild time wrap. So the time wrap uh, twisted something and um, Shade should be actually dead, but somehow his spirit find, found a way to the Feywild, uh, wrapped himself in cloths and bandages, and, and this is the way in which he keeps himself composed. He decided that he will use his knowledge uh, to prevent such events that wipe out whole races, though not knowing, not being certain if he is from the future or the past, he refrains to you from using his knowledge outright, so he speaks in riddles, so he doesn't change the timeline. He spells, sells proficiencies, skills, trainings. Um, he is basically well versed in every aspect that you can, every art that you can imagine. Um, his Spirit form prevents him from being creative, and as such, he accepts payments in dreams, in experiences, and ideas. And the last one I got is Fence. Uh, Fence is an oinlot. He looks like a tall, lean humanoid with long, curved uh, horns and um, a small, adorned with small bells and trinkets. Uh, she uh, has no nose, uh, so her face resembles somewhat something between a goat and an elf. Uh, you can see long, black, oily, uh, feathery um, wings on her back. Um, an Oinlot, if you don't know, is a demon slash devil. It's a fiend that is un un uh, unaligned with one of the two. Uh, he can be a mercenary. Uh, she is manipulative, she is secretive, and she will try very hard to keep her true reason as to why she is on the market to herself. Uh, she will also pose as the only honest um, merchant that is here, suggesting that she signs written contracts, except not uh, just spoken or not just... Um, promised uh she is um she works on behalf of one of the archfey with uh from from the feywild an archfey to struck a deal with a devil uh the merits of the deal are unclear uh, but one part of it was a free access um to the buyers in the feywild on the devil's behalf so uh she will happily buy your name um buy a favor from you uh, obviously she will happily buy your soul and that is why she is there and she will also accept magic items that fuel the blood war and provide information uh, the buyers need 
based on the rarity of the items that were sold so we have a couple of strange 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 individual individual that um in my opinion very clearly show what a goblin market might be and that is all i got for today um this episode was a two-part episode the next episode will be all about um fake creatures we will try to create our own fake creatures looking at existing ones looking at some patterns some mechanics that we can use to create something that suits our own campaigns much much more um i hope you like this episode if so click click like subscribe subscribe uh, thumbs up and whatever you got over there um it helps visibility of the material and helps me understand that you like it or not um and that is all for today i hope to see you around and bye